So at this point, I can assume that you probably already built a couple of awesome voice assistants with Wappy. You probably have already released them, used them for yourself, whatever was your goal. But once you head into a voice assistant like I have here right on the screen, mine is called Lisa. Inside the model section, you have the provider. And when you click on the provider, you have a field called custom LLM. Now, have you ever asked yourself why it is there, what it does? and if you can leverage it for your business to make more money with it. This is exactly what I'm going to explain to you today in this video. And I'm going to give you a lot of really, really awesome resources and templates on how you can leverage it without any coding knowledge that you can get started the easiest way possible and all within a couple of minutes. So stay tuned. So the first thing I want to touch is what that custom LLM actually is, because I've seen it many times in my comment section that people were asking me, how can I use a custom LLM? Can I just implement that on my system? Do I really need to know how to program or do crazy math to get it working? And that's not actually the case. The custom LLM in that case is maybe a bit misleading by the name because you're not actually creating a separate LLM. You could potentially do it, but this is not even necessary for that. You can even just use a custom hosted version of OpenAI, for example, with their 4.0 version or 3.5, whatever it is that you would like to use. And you can use their custom hosted LLM as the custom LLM inside of Wapi. Now you think, why is that there? Why does it make sense in the first place? The major reason we have seen inside of our businesses, because you have more control over the whole outcome and the whole conversation in the first place. There are tons of different use cases that I could name you right now. And to be precise, I'm gonna give you three of them because I think those are the main ones that we are using. First of all, we are using those custom LLMs to have better control over the messages. So in case someone tries to hijack messages, we have sometimes checks that validate whether or not those messages are harmful to the AI itself or to the LLM and it can basically disrupt the outputs we expect. Secondly, we use it to mitigate the risk of the AI leaving the script. So we can basically force certain outcomes during the conversation. And lastly, we have a completely granular control over the messages the AI can actually send to the client. So we can, for example, check inside of the prompt that comes through if there's a special keyword that we would like to check against, or if it is the whole prompt that just doesn't make sense in that context based on the user number or whatever it is we're gonna send through. So with a custom LLM, we basically take the possibility of making the requests to the LLM outside of Wapi on your very own server or wherever you wanna host that stuff and then have that server communicate back to Wapi with whatever the brain is that you use as an LLM. So in case that sounds too complex for you and you're not exactly sure what that means, bear with me. Here's a very basic explanation of it. As you know, the voice AI assistants, they have some kind of brain behind where you can basically send messages and it can just interpret them and it can send you a relevant response back. What you probably know when you chat to ChatGPT or any kind of other LLM, you'll get a mostly and hopefully meaningful response back. And then this response is basically just spoken words that are returned to you during a phone call. Very basic explanation. So what we do with a custom LLM is we basically are the ChatGPT that runs in the background and does all of the logic. And now instead of Wapi talking directly to OpenAI, we have a separate server that handles all of those requests to OpenAI. So we basically put the brain on a different server that we control, so we have more granular control over whatever happens inside. This is the basic concept. And I promise you, since we discovered how much things you can do with it, it is one of our favorite assets inside of our company, where we basically help our clients to make more money with voice AI in literally a ton of different niches. And it's getting more exciting by the day because we see so many use cases popping up. And in this video, I'm going to show you the first ones, the very basic ones. Bear with me, in the future videos, I'll also share with you a couple of more advanced use cases that you will definitely appreciate. And trust me, they're going to be incredibly powerful. All right, now we basically went through the theory. Now you should have an understanding that we basically just take the brain out, we put it on a separate server or basically a separate somewhere in the web and we can just have that part communicate with uh, Wapi. So we basically take Wapi out of that equation of making the logic behind it. And if you've read through the documentation, which I'm going to show you here as well, you can see that it is usually a technical thing and you need to have coding knowledge because you need to create all of those local dev environments with Python or any other programming language, whatever you would like to have for endpoints that you can connect to because in the end, this custom server also just provides you with endpoints, what you probably know as an API or webhook so that you can connect things to it. It's the exact same thing with Python in that case. These apps, as you can see here, slash set slash completion, it basically just creates an endpoint that will be accessible from within Wapi whenever you make a phone call. So if you ignore all of the coding part, in the end, it is just again Wapi sending a request to that custom LLM, which then in return can send information back based on whatever the message was that the customer sent through. This is a very basic explanation of it. Now, if you would follow this manual through, you would see that there are a lot of things to set up with ngrok, etc. Reading through all of that can be tedious and probably also a bit complex, especially if you're a beginner and you don't know exactly how to do that. Obviously, you can always ask AI to help you out with this, but if you would do that, you would probably not be here because 
What I'm going to show you is a complete template that you can literally just copy and use inside of your own business to have a custom LLM set up in the most basic way possible so that you can customize it depending on the features you need or if you just want to try it out and maybe you want to offer that as a service to your clients, you're most welcome to use the template as well. All right, so to get started and to actually have a custom LLM, I'm going to quickly head again back into Wapi because I would like to show you how that setup actually looks like. So you basically have your voice assistant and now instead of using the OpenAI standard model with 4.0 for example, we click on the provider, we select custom LLM and you can now see that it requests a custom LLM URL. Now this URL is basically the URL wherever you host this custom brain or basically your server, right? And in my case, I don't want to set up a complete server from scratch and deploy it on render and then use it from render to connect it to here. If again, all of that stuff doesn't make sense to you, no worries, because we are going to do none of those things. What we are going to do is we use Replit. So if you are part of my journey for a while now, you know Replit already because I was using it quite a couple of times for my chat AI templates that I was providing in my videos. And Replit is basically a visual way of creating a server in a visual interface. And you don't even need to have any technical knowledge. You can literally just copy this whole server template and you can host it by yourself by a click of a button. And that's literally it. So. That's why I'm a big fan of Replit because it just has a simple entrance for everyone to get started with even more custom solutions so that it's easier for you to understand them and leverage them for your business. By the way, you're not bound to Replit. It's just what I'm going to use as a server. You can even use that stuff on a completely different solution in case you're more technical. But for the majority, I guess, this basic server um, Replit setup will be sufficient. All right, now we're gonna head over to Replit because I already created a template here, as you can see right now on the screen. So once you head to replit.com, what you will do is you will just create an account and then you will click on this link that I'm going to share with you inside of my resource hub. By the way, if you have not heard of my resource hub, it is a place where I'm sharing all of my templates, all of my resources, everything I create on my YouTube channel completely for free so that you can simply copy it and use it alongside of your journey in your business for your clients, whatever you want. To get access to it, simply head over to hub.indigraticus.com the link is in the description. Now we're gonna head back here. So what I did here is I basically created a cup, uh, a replet template, which looks like this. You don't need to understand anything of that code. It is also pretty small, so you can maybe even ask ChatGPT if you would like to understand what is happening behind the scenes. But in our case, all you need to do is you literally just need to fork it, which you can do somewhere up here, whenever you see this template. And what you do then is you click on this little plus here, you're gonna search for secret. You're gonna open the secret tab, which then looks like this. So I already have it open. And what you do then is you click on new secret. You add this OpenAI API key field right in here. And you would add your custom OpenAI API key. Cause in that case, what we're going to do is we basically take out this whole brain from Bappy and we host it on our own side, which also means that we need to be responsible for paying OpenAI for using their API. So the example, I'm using OpenAI because it's very easy to integrate with that setup. It is very slim and I don't need to make many customizations. Obviously, if you use a custom LLM setup, you can use any kinds of LLM you want, even LLMs that are not listed on the VAPI dashboard itself because you have all of the flexibility right within the code that you're basically writing. Now, so since we are using OpenAI, all you're going to do is you add your API key right here. You will find the API key inside of your OpenAI API account inside the project that you basically create for it. So I suggest just create a new project, call it like Vapi Custom LLM, create an API key, paste this API key here and add the secret. Once you've done that, it should look something like this. So I have basically my secret edit here, open AI keys defined here. Now we are already done with the setup. There's literally nothing else you need to do. All you need to do in order to try it now is click on run here. And if you did everything correct, what I just explained, you should see a, the following messages, which basically means the server is up and running. So now we already created our own brain that just uses OpenAI as the actual LLM on that custom server. So again, what I did is I didn't create a complete LLM from scratch. All I did is I leveraged what is already there and I just rooted through my very own server, which acts as the brain. Great, so that's a lot of theory still, but now I'm going to show you how it actually looks practically and how we can call to it and how it sounds. So to actually get it now connected to your VAPI assistant, what you would need to do is you would locate the web view right here. If you don't see that, you click on the little plus and you search for web view. I already did that. And if you see not found, that is perfectly fine. There's no visual interface. All we need to do is we need to head over here to this new tab. We right click it and we click on copy link address. Now, once you copy the link address, you simply head over to your VAPI assistant, which is right here. You select the custom LLM as a provider and for the custom LLM URL field, you paste this URL and it will also show you a very neat and small information right here, how the endpoint should look like. You can read it in your case, it doesn't matter because I already predefined everything in the template I shared with you. What we're going to do now is we simply click on publish and we are ready to go. So as you can see now, we're using a custom LLM with a model 3.5 turbo. I'm not even sure if that visual model matters here because I have this model defined 
usually directly inside of the call because what we do here is we basically route all of the information that Buppy sends us straight through to OpenAI with two differences that we remove from this payload or from the information that is sent by Buppy, by Buppy which are those fields. But you can check them out yourself and if you read call and metadata, and you have worked with the API before, you probably already know. Great, so now we have it running, or we have the AI set up, and we are ready to actually test it. To be honest, what I'm going to do is I'll activate one more thing, this little line here. So I'm just going to remove this hash in the front. I'm going to save it. I'll stop this server and I start it again. Because what this allows us now, we can now see basically the request data that Buppy sends through directly inside of the console right over here. Console is a separate tab, by the way, up here. So you can activate that anytime. All right, it's time to give our assistant a call. Just gonna head over here. It is totally fine to just do a web call. So I'm gonna talk with Lisa and I just ask her some random questions. And you will see on the side inside of the server that we're actually getting messages that basically sent through, uh, sent from Buppy to our ass assistant or our customer LLM. Okay, I'm gonna allow. Hey, I'm Lisa, how can I help you? Hey Lisa, how are you? Oh, that's my mistake. I did something that I shouldn't have done because I removed one line here. You don't need to worry about that. It is just a mistake from my side. I'm just gonna define this whole part up here. I'm gonna save it again and I'm gonna run this whole thing again. Because as you can see, it throws an arrow. Actually, this is even more helpful because in case you run into an arrow, let's say something is wrongly configured or maybe you changed something and you see like 500 arrows here, it means something is broken. So by just going over it and maybe checking the last couple of lines, you can see the arrow itself. Here it says JSON not defined. If you just drop that into ChatGPT, it can probably give you an answer on where exactly the issue is located inside of your script. Just a small side note, if everything works out, you probably don't need to take care of that. In your case, in your case you will get anyways this fixed template. Now, I'm going to call her again and let's see now the actual responses right here. Hey, I'm Lisa. How can I help you? Hey, Lisa. How are you? I'm here to assist you with your account-related inquiries. How can I help you today? This is awesome. Um, what can you do for me? I can help you with your account pin code. So as you can see, it works. And how do I know it works? Because you can see that it asks or it sends over the exact information what I what I asked her to, right? And we also have um, some tools available down here, which by the way are probably not relevant in your case. It is just because I have them defined inside of my assistant. But if you scroll up here, you can now see, this is awesome and what can you do for me? This is literally what I said. So I know that the conversation is currently built up as a JSON format and it is sent over by Vapi directly to my script here, which is this endpoint. And this endpoint then basically just routes this information directly to chat GPT, uh, to the OpenAI API. And it does a chat completion it basically just creates the next message and the next message is then bumped back to Buppy, which then Buppy uses uh, with their voice transcribers to basically stream back to you a voice. This is the whole magic behind it. And I hope this gives you a little bit of a, a glance on how you can use it and how you can uh, set up your own custom LLM. And now you might think, okay, Yanis, this is awesome. But in that case, it does the exact same thing like what I would have usually done on Buppy. And yes, this is true because this is just a basic example on how we can show you how you can take out the brain from Buppy and you can put it on your very own server so you can do customizations on top of it. Because let's, for example, say you would like to have a check where you maybe want to adjust the prompt dynamically in the moment the prompt comes through based on a keyword inside of the context. In that case, for example, whenever I send this information through, what I could do is I could literally just have an, an if else check here and I can modify this prompt directly on the fly inside of the assistant without barely any delay because it's using just the Python code that is executed anyway. So with that, it's super powerful because you can manipulate the prompt on an extra level that you could not do if you would use the providers defined directly inside of Wapi. Now, with that said, you should probably have a better understanding of the custom LLM setup. And I hope it gives you already a bit of more guidance on how you can leverage that for your clients and your customers. And if that is interesting for you and you would like to see more about that specifically, stay tuned. I have a lot of videos coming up about custom LLMs, how you can use them to build really, really crazy and cool things with it. And I promise you, you will not be disappointed. And in case you have any questions, feel free to drop them below in the comments. And I'm looking forward to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.